I'm curious if you remember Belmont Oaks Academy, uh, the time you got in trouble and had to sit in the corner. I always laugh at it because my mom tells it to me that my pre-K teacher um, had me go sit in the corner and like time out because I had never gotten in trouble before. Like they'd never said anything to me. And so just to know what it felt like. And I probably should have sat in time out a little longer because I love playing pranks on everyone now. Your parents thought they were going to have a, a second child until two to three years of after having you. How much did you want to have a sibling as a kid? I think growing up I did, um, but it's kind of funny because being an only child and having two parents that worked really hard um, and wanting to be a kid who's at the golf course, a very solitary thing, like it kind of, in a weird way, groomed me for this career. I mean, you sit there with your own thoughts, your own frustrations, you know, there's no one to you know, kind of give you a hug after you play terrible and, you know, miss out on a Monday qualifier. It's like, you know, get back on the wagon. Um, and so I think, you know, I always wanted a sibling growing up, but my parents, they did such a good job of really just giving me the love and everything that I needed to be successful in whatever I did. And they knew that at a young age that I wanted to play golf. And so they would just basically drop me off at, you know, the Mariner's Point driving range and Foster City, California, and the guys there took care of me. They gave me free balls, and I would just hit golf balls all day. I loved it, and um, my dad and I would go play on Saturdays together at California Golf Club, and we'd play one, two, three, four, and then cut over to number nine and grab an Orange Julius milkshake and go home. And what was it about that place that you said it's like a <clears throat> spiritual experience? There's something about that place that, you know, I grew up essentially learning how to play golf at a place where there was a shrine for a U.S. Open trophy. And, you know, for Ken Venturi, who won, I believe, in 64. And seeing that U.S. Open trophy, seeing Tiger and the boom of golf, um, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And that golf course, there's nothing like it when coming up 18, you know, with the sun setting, you know, you kind of get the California, the San Francisco, you know, fog rolling through and it's just, it's gorgeous. But in terms of like me being able to go out there and I was the only kid, I mean, I was, and by the only kid, I mean like the only person under like 35 there. And so I had to hang out with, you know, obviously adults and learn at a young age that, you know, how to play golf and the proper um, etiquette that came with it. What role would you say your parents played in your success? I was a psych major at Wake, and so like I've loved understanding development of people. I've been around parents who, you know, the helicopter parents where they've been way too hard on their kids or, you know, don't leave their kids alone, and all of a sudden the 15 handicap is telling their son or daughter how to chip, and it's like, why would you do that? And my dad has never been to a single one of my golf lessons ever. They always made sure that I had the proper structure and had everything that I needed, but it was always my own. You know, we love playing golf together as a family. I mean, my dad plays all the time still. My mom plays here and there, but she's the real athlete in the family. You can play twice a year and break 95 both times, but they never pushed it on me. It was always my thing. If anything, both of them were like, hey, you need to take a break, you know, go pick up a baseball bat or something, you know, just, you know, you don't need to hit a million golf balls today or go play. Like, we want you to love it and don't burn out. You said your parents, in a way, though, uh, sacrificed their lives so you could pursue your dreams. Uh, how so? It's just, it's amazing to me, some of the sacrifices and the choices that they made for me to be such a good golfer. Both of them gave up a lot of time in, in their jobs to come follow me. His bosses didn't really understand why they were why my dad was taking off so much time to take an 11 year old to some of these tournaments. But the fact that he sacrificed really part of the, really the kind of the prime of his working career to just be with me and support me through this journey, um, I didn't take that lightly. I mean, I, I knew, I kind of knew, but the older I get, the more I appreciate it. The fact that they would go through the extra effort though to come to my tournaments and come watch me, you know, or take me to this event where, you know, some other families, they might, you know, put their kid in private housing for the week and they just wanted to be there with me to support me through it. And, um, you know, if I played poorly, they'd pat me on the back. And if I played well, they patted me on the back and that's all I could ever ask out of them.